Welcome to another shave here on the Soap Thing Project. In this video, I got a sample for you from Sterling. This one is Campania. This scent is, how do I describe this? It's a bit of a fig and citrus sort of scent. I'll explain more during the shave. It is Sterling's take on Aqua de Parma Fico di Amalfi, which is a phenomenal scent. It really is a excellent perfumery on the part of Aqua de Parma, and then Sterling did a good job of uh, taking it and making it work with their soap base. As far as Sterling's soap base is concerned, as long as I'm talking about it, Sterling's soap base is kind of the the baseline against which all other shaving soap bases will be judged. It's a tallow soap base. It's got beef tallow, castor oil, glycerin, almond oil, shea butter, coconut milk, and lanolin, among other more standard ingredients. So that's going to be the soap that I am going to use today. And it is $4.10 for one ounce sample. It's kind of a one ounce disc of soap. So you get quite a lot for not a lot of money, if I'm being honest. For the aftershave, you know, I got plenty of aftershaves that would pair pretty okay with this. But because it's so freaking fracking hot outside, I'm going to go ahead and use Fine Accoutrements Snake Bite for the aftershave. You're going to be seeing a lot of this in sample videos. So that's going to be the aftershave menthol heavy stuff. Uh, maybe not as potent as some other ones, but it's definitely enough alcohol and menthol to get the job done and really get you a nice menthol burn on the face. Now moving on to the Razor. It is the Razorock Lupo 58 316 stainless steel made in Canada. I am not going to mess around with the blade bag today because I have a bunch of loose blades sitting on my countertop that only have one or two shaves behind them. So in this case we do have a second use Gillette Wilkinson sword blade already in it. And I'm going to work on that on and off camera until it's time to throw it away. For the brush is going to be from Bill Reed over at Shore Shave. And I don't tend to plug uh, artisans or brush makers or razor makers. I don't tend to plug anybody really severely, but I'm going to do that today because this is a phenomenal brush. 22 millimeter Maggard G5 synthetic. It does have a little bit of glue rising up into the... Uh, into the bristles. I'm not sure if you can see that. That's not Bill's fault. That's just a problem with the particular knot I ordered and had sent to him. Kind of the, the thing that sucks about not knowing what you, not, not seeing what you buy before you send it over to a brush maker. So, but he did warn me that it's like, yeah, the glue is coming up out of this one. I was like, I'm not worried about it. But the shape is my personal favorite. If you've followed the channel for a long time, you know, I really love the this particular shape on a brush and if you notice the color is quite familiar that's because he went ahead and copied for all practical purposes the sterling green color here it is against sterling tangerine a little three ouncer but he pretty much nailed that about as perfect as you're gonna get I've had uh, plenty of uh, brush makers that I've went to and said hey can you make me a sterling green brush and they were either like, no, I don't think I can do anything that specific, or they were like, ah, I don't know, let me give it a try. And then you never hear back from them again. I asked Bill Reed if he could do it, and he was like, hell yes, I can. Hold my beer and watch this shit. And that's exactly what he did. And this is the second time he's done this. He has nailed a perfect sterling green, well, near perfect, two times in a row. So if you were looking for a sterling-themed brush, but you want something a little more high-end, definitely pick up one... From Bill Reed over at Shore Shave, tell him the soap thing sent you. I'm sure he'll be happy to hear about that. So that's the brush. Okay, let's do a shave.
Okay. <clears throat> About how much growth do I have on this handsome face today? About 44 hours. Let's just call it two days. And here in the Pereira Shavery Unbreakable Shaving Bowl, we have the Sterling Campania lathered up nicely with a. This is a fairly robust scent. I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 on the sniffometer. Okay, let's put it on. So I showed you the act of me scooping soap off of the disc and placing it into the bottom of the bowl. There was a comment in one of my recent videos where where Solo Mission asked me if I measure exact amounts of soap or if I just eyeball it. I just eyeball it. I know some people do have uh, really exact measurements for their uh, the amount of soap that goes in the bowl. I'm not that anal retentive. I don't feel the need to do that. <laughs> no offense at all if you are. I'm just like, it's eyeballing it is fine for me. Uh, and I am slopping this stuff just all over the place. You get some lather, and you get some lather, and the freaking mirror gets some lather. Actually, none of it came off the brush onto the, onto the mirror. Go figure. Okay. Uh, a little thinner than I would prefer. I think I added a little too much water. But whatever. It'll shave just fine. Here is the Razor Rock Lupo 58 with a Gillette Wilkinson Sword Blade second use, and here we go. Nice. It is doing what a blade is supposed to do, which is slice hair off of the surface of my face. You'd be surprised how many blades can't do that very well. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the scent of this thing. So for the notes, we have grapefruit, bergamot, citron, lemon, fig, jasmine, pink pepper, cedar, and benzoin. Um, so this strikes me as kind of a citron and fig fig and pink pepper forward scent and uh, then things get a little woody and rich I'm guessing that's the cedar and the benzoin all in all this is a very summery scent it's citrusy it's got some sweetness from that fig it's a little bit floral um, Pink pepper can come off two ways. Either bright, spicy, or it can give off a kind of effervescence. In this case, it's just kind of bright, spicy. The woodiness in this is plenty enough to, uh, to pick up. Uh, if I had to pick a note that is that that seems to be invisible, probably the lemon. I'm not getting lemon out of this. I'm getting more grapefruit and bergamot, and uh, and then fig, and then cedar, benzoin, pink pepper, and stuff like that. I've come close to buying Aqua de Parma Fico de Amalfi a couple times, but I happen to know that the projection and longevity is really low by designer standards, so I'm not going to waste my money. I'm going to get something stronger. Speaking of it being a designer fragrance, it does smell 
designer fragrance-esque, which is my fancy way of saying, I guess for the untrained, untrained shaver, they would say, this smells cologne-y. And uh, yes, yes it does. It smells cologne-y. It's a very professional or designer-esque take on fig and citrus. This would be an excellent scent to wear to the beach or to shave right before you go to the beach. All right, after you get back from the beach, I don't know. There needs to be a beach involved. So definitely add that to your equation if you're gonna use something like this. Been having phenomenal shaves with this Lupo 58. It's one of those razors where, as long as you're not being too stupid, it's kind of hard to screw up with it. It'll forgive a lot of uh, poor technique. So, I know a lot of people will shave like this on their chin. Anytime I have ever done that, I get nicks and cuts, and I mean bad ones. Like, I don't know if you can see, there's one right under my chin, right, right underneath my chin right there. I'm not sure if that's visible, but... That was so bad, I had to get stitches. And it was because I tried to shave like this. So that's why I do two passes like this instead of going down and then up because it negates that problem that I have with my face. And I had it pretty bad. It was a, a pretty consistent problem. The only thing that sucks about this razor is because it's uh, fairly low blade feel and really low blade gap, it's pretty mild. It doesn't feel all that mild. but it shaves that way, it, uh, it's more mild than it feels. You'll get satisfying feedback, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's doing much for you. So I gotta go back and play buff in a lot of places whenever I use this. I think I might have hacked off a, a bump there. Okay, let's have a rinse. Yeah, it looks like a good shave to me. All right, let's whip out this fine snake bite and put it on the face. If you are somebody who wants a really menthol heavy experience, but you're worried that chiseled face cryogen or wet the face, uh, whatever their stuff is called, their menthol heavy offerings is just like too much, Get fine snake bite because it's probably the simplest ingredients list. Oh man, feels great. Does it say what ingredients are on this? Not really, but I have an old bottle of it and it's mostly just alcohol and menthol. <laughs> like there's not much else in it. So if you want a really basic aftershave that's going to really give you a 
nice menthol burn on the face, that's definitely the way to go. Okay, my final thoughts on Sterling Campania. Is that good enough to buy a full-size tub? I seem to remember, I don't remember if I own a full-size tub of that or not in my collection back in the States. But if I don't, I'm going to buy one when I get back, that's for sure. It's just a phenomenal scent, great for the summertime. It's not a, it's not a scent that's duped a lot. It's pretty much Sterling dupes it and then Razorock has 1X. And I think that's about it. So if you're looking for a scent dupe that's not like everywhere, then that's one option to get is the uh, the Fico di Amalfi in the interpretation that Sterling has it. Yeah, that's my thoughts on Sterling Campania. Questions, comments, put them in the comment section of the video. Otherwise, this is something telling you shave like you mean it. Thanks for watching.